You're watching the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. It has been quite the rocky start in Morgantown, and these fans are looking for anything to be excited about after losses to Kansas and Pitt. West Virginia still looking for win number one on the year, and today, 2-0 Towson visits with a chance at a program-defining win. Hello everyone and welcome to Morgantown. The three-time All-American Adam Brenneman and Noah Reed with you. There might not be another team in the country more ready for game day than West Virginia trying to bounce back. First 0-2 start since 1979. And today, Adam, is very much a find out what you're made of type of game. Yeah, well, despite all the negativity and outside noise around this West Virginia program, they're really only a few uh, few plays away from being a 2-0 football team. Today's about blocking out the noise, coming together, getting some swagger back, and getting this thing going back in the right direction. Well, you know a guy who's never lacked any swagger. That's West Virginia's quarterback, JT Daniels. The transfer from Georgia won a national title last year. Yeah, if there's been one bright spot in this West Virginia program, it's quarterback back JT Daniels he's been electric through the first two games almost 600 yards passing remember this is the same JT Daniels who was 7-0 as a starter at Georgia in the SEC if, if uh, West, West Virginia is going to turn this thing around it'll be on the back of JT Daniels well if you're an FCS school and you're wanting to come into town and take down a power five team an experienced quarterback is usually a pretty good place to start and Tyrell Pigram is in his seventh year of college football it's really one of the most interesting stories in college football Tyrell Pigram seventh year four different school he's 24 years old and he's played at a high level everywhere he's been and now if he can leave Morgantown with a win today he'll leave his legacy on college football he played for four years at Maryland went to Western Kentucky for a year went to Ole Miss last year where he didn't play but he was around that SEC environment every day so five of the seven years he's been in power five football West Virginia is in its fourth year under Neil Brown, the head coach of West Virginia. And uh, Adam, he needs a win pretty desperately today. Yeah, you said it in the open. This is a find out what you're made of game, Noah. And they're going to need a fast start, get the ball in their playmakers' hands. It's West Virginia who has the football to begin things, and a touchback brings out the Mountaineers' offense first to start today. Well, we already talked a little bit about JT Daniels. He's the quarterback, spent two years at USC, the number one quarterback in the country in high school in 2018. Two years at USC, two years at Georgia, and now he's the guy at West Virginia. Yeah, he's had a really interesting story. Big time recruit coming out of high school. Everyone in the nation wanted him. Went to USC with Graham Harrell and, and played at Georgia for a little bit. And now, in what's probably going to be the final year of his college football career, he needs a big day today. Mathis gets the first touch. He shakes free. There goes Tony Mathis down the sideline, and he gets shoved out of bounds near midfield for a 25-yard pickup on the first play of the game. Tony Mathis, and talking, talking to the coaches all week, he is due for a big week, just a simple inside zone play. And he takes it. Here's Mathis once again as they go up tempo, and he breaks an ankle tackle down inside the 40-yard line and Steed with the stop. Playing fast as expected, the high tempo Graham Harrell offense going to try to wear down the Towson defense. Mathis gets it a third time in a row, and this guy is really good at breaking tackles. And, and head coach Neil Brown said last week, we felt that he was pressing too much. We just wanted to get back to who he is, and these first few plays, he's back to who he is. Yeah, he's thinking a lot of the last two games, and C.J. Donaldson's been kind of the star that everyone, everyone's talked about at the running back position. But if they're going to win some football games here, especially as they get in the Big 12 play, Tony Mathis is going to have to step up like he did those first three plays. He said C.J. Donaldson comes in for the first time to give Mathis a spell after those three carries. Second down and short. Here's a throw to the near sideline, and it's caught right inside the 30-yard line by Caden Brather. A guy who Adam is just a sophomore, really young guy in this coaching staff. So he's already really good, but he's starting to figure himself out. Yeah, he's got an elite skill set. He's a long, big, strong receiver, but he's young, and he's made some plays the first couple weeks for him. But I think that's another theme we're going to see today. Let your playmakers get the ball in space and see our athletes are better than your athletes. First down. Here's a talk on the end around for Reese Smith. Curling around the corner, and he gets ripped down at the 25-yard line. Mason Woods, the freshman linebacker who's just 
19 years old, makes the tackle. Just a simple toss pass to Reese Smith, and he takes it around the edge. And this Ray Merrill offense wants to spread you out, wants to make you cover sideline to sideline, and plays that make it pretty difficult. Yeah, he had a bit of that when he was a quarterback at Texas to get me. Gunslinger and a penalty here in the first one of the day after Towson jumps off sides. Tremar Reese, again, if they list as linebacker, but more times than not, Adam, he lines up on the line. Four to five looks sometimes. Yeah, he really rushed defense. One of their best pass rushers. And uh, he's a big kid. He played defensive end at Indiana before transferring to Towson, and he's going to have to step up today. Second and short. Again, Mathis picking his way through the defense, and it's an before Reese, who just committed. Offensive line and the strength one of their strengths. They return the most out the big offensive line to And they want to continue to go after it. And this is a throw that's way over that from Daniels looking for his top target, Bryce Ford Wheaton. And this is JT Daniels' favorite target. He's had almost 15 targets a game <laughs> in weeks one and two. And uh and you can see he makes it. And talking to Carroll this week, he said he deserves to touch the football. Yeah, he's got two catches per game, first two. That's the same big mark in all the college football. Daniel zips it again to that sideline. It's caught, caught by Ford. Breaks one, dives to the pylon, and he's a little bit shy of it. The first of what we assume to be catch for that. You can see just the all by the defense back. They're trying to keep it right. open. Here's Mathis trying to find the goal line, but he gets short by Ryan Carney, the graduate student. Two big fourth stops for him last week. One of the leaders of this defense. West Virginia gets the red zone a lot, but Struggled sometimes pitching it in the end zone. Only seven of their 11 round trips have resulted in six. Daniels, far side. It's in by Pricer. Down West Virginia. Why Caden Prather? School. Everyone in the nation wanted to die. Good ball, JT Daniels and Ken Prather. He's just too big. Christian Smith on the coverage there for Dawson. And that's the kind of drive you want to start this game if you're West Virginia. Take momentum back and get things moving in the right direction. The extra point. It's good. Seven things start for. Virginia, 10 points, 75 yards, just over three minutes off the clock, and JT Daniels scoring drive to start for the Mountaineers. Caden Prather with a two touchdown catch up off the drive. That's Virginia team really didn't have much momentum going the first two weeks. Adam finds play today. Yeah, it's exactly what you needed to start fast. When we talk about on this drive, getting the play, here's the ball, spread it out. That's what Graham Harrell wants to do. He's got to be happy the first drive. 10 play, 75 yard drive, and Mathis, the running, ran for 47 of those off to a fantastic start. Short kickoff here from the four yard line. Great return up to the seam. One man. Exactly what you do not want if you get Bill Brown in West Virginia. 
96 yards at him on the return. Diego Hunter. How about him turning on the Nets down the sideline? Runs the kicker. It goes to the racing. Dickers on CAA kickoff. And it was pretty evident right there. <laughs> wow. FCS comes to a power five. The first time they touch the ball is a six yard kickoff for a touchdown. And we're square away at seven, like four minutes into this thing. West Virginia has been pretty good on teams through the first two weeks. And now this is another thing. Neil Brown, Mountaineers need to come up. Diego Hunter, just an impressive job. Great job, blockers, the up back kickoff return. Say, so we can play with the big boys. Do you remember the one of the very best things Neil Brown did to us on our phone call earlier this week? Their special teams give me a lot of worry. That is why. Yeah, and Diego Hunter's a big reason for it. Played receiver in high school. He's a former one that earned a scholarship. And it goes into a big stage here on the road in the Big 12. It has a play, maybe a play of his career. <laughs> he turned a 92-yard kick for a touchdown in 2019 just did it 96 yards tie this game back up short bounce takes a hop into the zone and another touchback west virginia offense well we talked a little bit about rob gross just now his 14th head coach of this club he's a towson guy through and through a guy who's really trying to this program back to powerhouse level at the FCS. Yeah, Rob Ambrose does a great job at Towson. He had in the 2013 FCS National Championship game they lost. But he's done a great job. Really, a ton of roster turnover for this Towson program. Rob Ambrose told us that they're more limited statically than they've ever been before because they have almost 50 new players on their roster. A lot of them came in the summertime. 56 new guys. What a crazy number. Donald. Short gain, about three yards. Now this is an interesting drive. How does West Virginia respond? They face it very first two games. They face it the first time Towson touches the ball. Can you stay composed and put another good drive? A season filled with adversity. One loss to Pitt in the final moments. Overtime loss to Kansas right here at this same place a week ago. Daniels to the line. It was Prather. Again on a diving attempt. Excuse me, Jamar, Jeremiah Aaron he caught it for the first down. Wow. Catch by Jeremiah Aaron. Spread out, getting the foot down. Junior college transfer. Show play. A guy that they want to get touches for. Led all of junior college in yards a season ago. So it's out by Talbot here. And the catch that we saw is now under review, and we're going to get another look at it here, Adam. Great placement by JT Daniel. We're only the receiver at it. Look, looks like he gets his knee down, but does he have possession of the football that knee touches? Look, he bobbles it a little bit. Need inclusive evidence, of course, to be able to overturn and the call in the field, which is clearly important was catch. And Rob Ambrose is heated. Pleading his case. So there you have it. Really did catch. Rob Ambrose wants him to look it over. Will. What are you thinking? At the end, a couple looks at it. I think this one may be coming. It looks like Juggling the ball bit as his knee comes down. Let's see, he gets the knee down inbounds. But I think he's juggling the ball. I think this one's coming back. This is probably, let's look at it right here. Yeah, I come see, back. Yeah, that juggled and tried to lock it up with his hip there at the very end. He's got to control it through the ground, through the ground, and have that knee bounds while he's concerned. pretty remarkable catch I don't know if it's going to stay a catch yeah, you see the athlete having this West Virginia program 
JT Daniels talked about how when he was deciding to transfer to, he went on an official visit to West Virginia, watched practice, and was just amazed at all the athletes running around on the field and said, I'm going to throw to these receivers. And if I was him, I'd want to throw Bryce Ford Wheaton, Caden, Sam James. I mean, a lot of guys who have a lot of big time football. Yeah, and probably have an offensive coordinator like Grant Earl who loves to do a tempo, get out in space, let receivers plays. When we talked to Carroll this week, I said to him, no one loves to throw more than you do. And he said, he said Adam, I like to throw it, but we also got a running back to the ball a little bit. <laughs> the review here, it, it is close. Rob Ambrose says, no, it's not. Yeah, Ambrose is not happy that this <laughs> was the way it is on the field. You know, the thing with JT Daniels that so many of the coaches raved about this is just his maturity. Mm -hmm. how, uh, they use the word emotionally consistent, that he's the same every day through the ability, through the ups and downs. It's like the call. Wow, all right. Stay home. I guess not enough to open that. I'm 0 for 1 on the record. <laughs> My record. Yeah. Like, that's the reason I'm not the player official. <laughs> and now he's running all the way across the field. I saw to the other end to tell Ambrose exactly what the decision was and what they revolt, revolt, held that up. So it's like that went under review for yeah. challenged it. is not happy on the sidelines. Oh, Virginia after the length review at the football at the 38-yard line on first down. Same. Found a little bit of seam to the 31-yard line. Donald averaging almost nine yards a carry coming in. Today. And he's been one of the surprises of this West Virginia team was a tight end in high school. They listed as a tight end on their roster. They didn't even know he was going to be in the running back room going to training camp. A little thin at running back room in there, and sounds like he dominated during training camp. Top five in all of college football at nine yards a game. Crowd to the far sideline. Bryce Wheaton gets ripped down by three defenders for 10, about a yard shy of Walker. You see how much pushing. These Towson DBs are being Bryce Ford Wheaton. Because of his speed. Want to get beat deep. Run here on third and one. He might not have got it. That is right at the line to gain. Donaldson. Yeah. If you're West Virginia, you got to be able to push on third down by that big offensive line. Fourth than a yard. Decision here. It looks like they're going for it. They're three for four on fourth down season. And it's Donaldson, the big 200-pound freshman line, as the running back. He gets the touch. Stutter steps, cuts back in for a first down. DJ Donaldson, a carrier. Not just big, but this can move a little bit. Yeah, that's what you need from your big back to the oh, whole hard awesome. shot by the offensive line. Tight end Michael Lachlan there at the point of attack and push. Close to shot territory here. You cross the 50 yard line, got a set of downs. And here it is. Play action. Daniels facing pressure, zips it in the middle, and his hand got hit on the throw. Nobody near it on the incompletion. Shaheem Holwanger got the pressure. To take a shot down there. You cross the 50 yard line, you got a clean set of down. And the offensive line can't hold up. Doug, Nitter, right tackle, getting beat inside. Virginia Tech trainer has got to do a better job of keeping his leverage and giving T. Daniels some time. One could have been a touchdown. Now, one of three guys on the line for West Virginia, all Big 12 a year ago. Mathis. Can't get away. He's yanked down behind a scrimmage. But a late flag coming in. Bay 
hangs on with the tap well behind the line. on grab the face mask. What a play. Face on the Kent State transfer. That one's not close. <laughs> Does a good job stringing it out. It's the play, but you can't grab the face mask. And that's a tough play. If you're your Towson defense, you can let third and Mathis was almost taken out of the ear hole of the helmet after that. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be about a fire of loss. Probably got some of that there, too. He stays on the field, though. Here's Porter. Curling through. Finds an opening in the middle of the field and goes lunging for the first down. Screenplay running out into the towards the receiver to get those small defensive backs. Not an easy task with the big 300 pound lineman. First down, Daniels. A little bit of heat. And he sacks. Two late flags in again. Jordan with sack for the time being. Tell you what. Virginia's offensive line to play better. We'll see what this call is, but getting pressure. They're getting pressure with three rushers right now. <laughs> Holding penalty as it's declined in the stack, sack stands. See West, West Virginia. The block three to four. This linebacker comes late. God, you up that pressure. You got five to linemen. JT Daniels has way too much pressure in his face right now. It's a big strength, this Virginia offense. Those big linemen. Mathis. Nice move from Mathis to be able to get something there on that play. Ryan Carter with the tackle. A guy who was a starter up in about halfway through last year, Adam, and they said he has just waited his turn. He took time put in the work and now he's the guy at the linebacker court. Defense coordinator Eric Daniels told us he just does everything right. You never question if he's gonna be where he's supposed to be. As we see Westford checking their play on the side right here, lining up, seeing the look, and then Grant is gonna call the best play on the coverage. The eleventh play of the drive now West Virginia milking the clock trying to take a lead a little more than halfway through the quarter. Daniels to the sideline, Prather once more, spins from one, inside the five-yard line. Daniels, great job working through the progression there. Still to the left, comes back to the right. Has his big receiver, Caden Prather. Start left, work right. This is, this is progression four, his fourth receiver. That's what he does well. He's played so much football. He can read the defense. Mathis finds the ball and he's in for Mountaineers touchdown. He was the work on the first drive. Didn't do a lot on this one, but Adam, he gets the mix. Yeah, well, running back goes Chaz Scott talked this week about Tony Mathis being decisive, hit the ball, and boys, he showed up the play. That around C. Donaldson. Tony Mathis said, I can play some football too. And he was their leading rusher coming, turning back for this 22 season. Casey Lett drives it through the middle to put West Virginia by seven with 40 to go in the first quarter. West Virginia with a seven lead here early. Caden Bray, 20 yard reception, set up the touchdown. On his fourth catch of the game, Tony Mathis a few plays later pushes it in. And the Mountaineers score here in the first.
What a beautiful day in Morgantown, West Virginia, here on this Saturday afternoon. Towson out of the FBS, putting up a early against West Virginia right now. After Mathis scored a three yard touchdown on the run to give West Virginia the lead back. Here's Hunter for six. He had a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. First time he touched the day. Breaks a few and gets it out near the 30. I thought we might see something special again. And Diego Hunter just electric ball in his hands. Starts left, zigzags back right. Here's a look at your to the game, Adam. And for Towson, you said slow the foot game down. Well, I don't know if they uh, heard you because 96 yard return for a touchdown. This game going really fast. Yeah, if you're Towson, you just want to get this game halftime with a one score game. You, you want to give yourself a chance in the second half. So run the football slow down, control possession. And then they got a steal possession from West Virginia. Interception, block punt, something to keep them in this game. Hunter stays in the field. And a short game, maybe didn't get anything back to the line. It's Jordan Jefferson meets it. West Virginia defense line is the strength of their defense. Sean Martin, Jordan Jefferson, and Dante still leading the way up. Set long here for Pigra. It's Towson offense. A little miscommunication with his running back. Fires a dart of Isaiah Perkins. Pigram's had to work on his whole career. Being an active passer. Head coach Rob said to us, he used to be an athlete who plays quarterback. Now he's the real back, and he can throw the ball. You got to bring that one down. No, it's really we're four minutes left in the first quarter, and this is the first time we're talking about Pigram. Yeah. Usually that can happen with a quarterback. This is the first drive seeing the football after the kickoff return for a touchdown down complete it's hunter the run back and dives for 35 and that's about far shy of the marker oh, Pegram, seventh year of college football spent four years at man where he was actually the starting quarterback at him and knocked off top 25 texas a few years back yeah a lot of people remember that game and he's played a ton of college football he's thrown for 30 yards in his college career between maryland and kentucky he was a this last year, the season, and he just got the Towson in July. He's only been there for uh, for a short of time. Wasn't even the starter in week one. They rolled out Scott for the first play. He's he's won over this won over this coaching staff. Rob Ambrose told us this is the guy. Yeah, a lot of snaps with Smith in that first of the year against Bucknell. So that's fourth down. A little bit longer here on the punt for Towson. Riley Williams on the way for the Tigers. Reed Smith back to return Western West Virginia. You said Western Kentucky and you got me all messed up now. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of work going on today, man. Williams, great punt. Spins all the way back to the 20. He holds it in. Trying to reverse the field, and he can't. He's swarmed at the 18-yard line. 51-yard from Williams. West Virginia's offense back out on the field. They're trying to add on to this touchdown lead. Impact day of football. First at Eastern Ohio starts off with Iowa State. Three two lakes on Kansas State at seven Eastern Arkansas Pine Bluff. The Stillwater to eighth ranked Oklahoma. State. For all Big 12 now on ESPN content, sign up ESPN Plus com slash Big 12. Well, 
gorgeous day here in town, West Virginia. And the Mountaineers with a touchdown lead. They forced the punt, and now the offense comes back on the field. Adam with the chance to onto this lead. Yeah, it's about complimentary football now. Your defense gets a stop. You go down the field and put this up. Donaldson, they've kept the ground a lot today. tight end that they brought in to play tight end and some wide receiver put him in at back instead because of depth issues it's worked pretty well for him on an 82 yard score point after is there. three offensive drives for West Virginia three touchdowns and the Mears with a two touchdown lead yeah, well this is what they've shown the last two weeks as well they punted once last week Against Kansas, the offense has been locked out. With CJ Gibson leading the way, had a cool game against Pitt. And just for a guy that big, and that ball, he's 6'2. Does a great job reading that ball by his tight end, and then miss the defensive miss. Finishes the sideline, dancing a little bit as he gets to the end zone. West Virginia fans are feeling good now. <laughs> a little bit better than they've been feeling in week one, too, after the pit loss, the overtime loss to Kansas last week. And C.J. Dotson, who was averaging almost nine yard carry, is uh, bumping that number up a little bit more yeah, for Neil. It's got to be a lot higher than that now. Morgantown's bump. Even at 0 oh 2, wasn't it all? Driving into town today and just seeing this place a lot as well. On the return, he sandwiched right away. No kickoff return for a touchdown time for Diego Hunter. Right. And you can feel the momentum starting to shift now mm -hmm. in this game, but momentum is big for the Virginia program right now, too. They need some positive energy, some mojo back, get some swagger back. CJ Johnson's got some swagger. <laughs> that guy. Never lacked any sweat. And in his first collegiate game, he ran for 125 yards and just seven touches against Pitt two weeks ago. End around for the receiver. It's Sandals. Love to get this guy involved in space. And he's taken down at the 20 yard line. This is Tyrell Graham, quarterback, seventh year in college football, and a guy that has really, really developed as a passer from where he was seven years ago. He's grown a lot and developed as a lead, as a passer. He's been through a lot in his college career. I mean, this guy's been around for so long in college football, and he's grown up. He's got a chance today to make a name for himself. Batted away on the pass. Jordan Jeff, who already made a tackle for on the first drive, now beats up the pass and brings third and long for this Texan offense. Yeah, Jordan Anderson, so talented, uh, he's a rolling state champion in high school. He splits the team, puts his hands up and bats it down. Big boy at 6'3", 310 pounds. Yeah, I'd like to wrestle that. I no, not want to. <laughs> I'd tap out. Third and seven, Towson trying to avoid the three and out. Pigram fakes some heat, steps and gets crunched at the eight yard line and brings up fourth down. Vester, sophomore, makes the tackle. Vester does a great job, but just stay alive. Pigram bounces around a little bit, does what he does best. Escapes the pocket. And 
faster in him. Just retracing the steps and making a huge play. From Finland, coaches talked about him all week, about a guy who deserves to play more. He showed up there on a big third down. I talked about his motor, so huge motor, better and better, and he has earned more snaps this week. I don't know how many college football players are from Finland. <laughs> but one right here. Not only do we have one, the number one player of Finland, too. Towson, that's their second of the hand. And so Towson has to burn the time out here with 2.07 to go in the first quarter before the down comes up. Rob Ambrose is not happy. It's the second penalty that they've had on a punting situation. They had a delay game earlier. Or they took the timeout and took the penalty there, but you can't have kind of procedural errors, especially when you're on the road, you're big on the dogs. Got to keep this game close. And the way the game started for them, too, they got the touchdown, but they had kickoff return that tied at seven and probably feeling pretty good about themselves, but like yeah. you said, mistake penalties, they'll come back at a power five. After that kickoff return, I'll tell you, he wasn't feeling too good. The West Virginia fans, they were sweating a little. <laughs> Williams on to punt it. He set his career high on the last punt. 51 yards. This one almost got blocked, and it's significantly sure as it rolls out of bounds into the territory for field to begin for West Virginia. It looked like Matt rough and got through there. And if he didn't, he didn't tip it, he at least impacted the punt because that was a bad punt. But then after the punter there with everything that he had. 51 on the first is 27. This one for Williams. For a West Virginia offense that hasn't had any trouble getting the football today. The ball to start at the 46. And we'll see if they can put together another five. They're plus territory. So again, this is this is where you normally see Tim Harrell and take some shots down the field to then get one of their playmakers the ball. See JT was checking the play. First for Johnson, the third of those trio of running backs that we'll see for West Virginia today. Six yards. Well, Justin Johnson's a young guy, a little bit undersized. Just needs to be fast. Now they'll give him one more touch. Crawling through the hole, and he's first down for the Mountaineers. Well, speaking of very fast, West Virginia playing very fast right now. They snap that It's like 30 seconds play clock. Here they go again. Roll. It's almost like the offensive coordinator's grand or something. Guy who wants to play this way. Daniels, first throw of the drive. End zone. Reiser. Bring it up. Rob Javier was there on the one-on-one -on -one coverage in second down. Javier does a great job of staying on Reiser's hip. Let him get separation. Well, Javier's quarterback, Rob Pigram. I highlighted him and said he's really hard to throw against in practice. Yeah, it's a great job here. Just staying on top of him. He doesn't even get his head around. That's what I'm sure Prather wishes he would go up and get. It's a little bit over three. Johnson again he tripped himself. The yard. And, uh, Justin Johnson. Of the situations you're now third and long because you can't run the football second down in a tough situation play caller and for your offense I haven't faced any tough third down today and they have great on third down there Daniels third and 11 connects went short of the first down though to Sam James. Sam James is a guy I think we'll call his name more and more as, it, as we go on here. It looks like, are they thinking about going for this? Fourth and nine? Well, they have to snap it. So it's probably the final the quarter. They go to the quarter. They don't pick up on third down here, but start for Nielsen's offense. 
three drive touchdowns at this point and up 21-7 through the first 15 minutes. Mountaineer fans feeling a little bit better about themselves than they were the last weeks. West Virginia's got it going offensively. Can't return for Diego. Hunter's the only score. Towson and a 21-7 lead for West Virginia. To Morgantown, West Virginia, start of the second quarter with West Virginia top of Towson. Two touchdowns. How about this, Adam? Fourth to nine defensive stand on the field. Gotta love the confidence Neil Brown showing in Jay Fields. And I know you can get it done. Mountaineers are one for one on fourth down, but that was a fourth and one, not a fourth and nine. Fourth and nine is not a high probability <laughs> down the distance. See what Daniel calls up here. Got a man on the sideline, and it's pulled in by Ford Wheaton and moves the sticks for the nine. It's almost too easy. Playing off, Bryce Wheaton is such a threat down the field with his size and his speed. It's a simple out route. You see that DB giving him about a 10 yard throw, easy cat. JT Daniels and Bryce Ford Wheaton in their sleep. Averaging 10 catches a game through the first throw is Ford Wheaton. Johnson on the ground. This has been his drive, the third string run back for the Mountaineers. Justin Johnson. Robert. Tyler. Are we going to see the tight ends get involved in the red zone a little bit? <laughs> Surely you, you, as a tight end yourself, don't want to see that, right? I was going to bring that up. <laughs> Got Michael I, I, Laughlin out there, split out wide. I had an over under on time, and I was uh, two minutes into the first quarter, was my guess. So you, so you lasted <laughs> longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Daniels, Ford Wheaton, in, but he overthrew. Daniels intended for JT Daniels wanted to have back, but you know, a lot of people think JT Daniels coming out of high school, not one quarterback in the country, but he really started that trend of high school seniors skipping senior year. Yeah. To go to, to, go to college early. Oh, wow. I think he might have missed a late hit. Yeah, I don't know if he get pushed into JT Daniels or he just. That was about as good as it gets. And now it's another long order down for West Virginia. Daniels, Ford Week, first down, still up, just down to the three yard line. Martin Woods makes the stop shortly before the goal line, and it's first goal now for the Mountain after a 14 catch. You see Ford Wheaton out long, just running a simple under route. Gets past the linebackers in the hole in the zone. You know, this Towson defense, knowing that they outmatch athletically, has to play zone yeah. every play. And that's why we're seeing just the easy catch and catch routes to Bryce Ford Wheaton. He's got four touchdowns this season. Third most by any one receiver in the country. Target him a lot in the red zone. They do it one time. Ford with the juggle. And touchdown. Get five on the year. Bryce Ford Wheaton. Man, he is just so darn good. Bryce Ford. Just a simple fade out. Gets one foot down, left foot. Everyone in the stadium. That play was coming. That looks Ooh, into me. Yeah. That's really close. Casey got to attempt. See how fast they can snap the ball here. <laughs> it looked to me like he got the f in. But I'm 0 1 today on reviews. We're going to take a look at it here. It, here's, here's the thing, too, Adam. It like, looks like he gets the, the toes in, right? Those come down. But is the whole foot in? Because that heel, look at this heel down right there. I think I, I think his heel might be out, not. Yeah, as long as his toe is in, the first thing that he should be okay. Now, does he? 
Does he roll the cat through the toe coming mm -hmm. down? When the toe comes down, does he control that football? Yeah. And what we can't see there at that angle is, is he bobbling on the ground? Uh, that that be what they're looking at as well. The ruling on the field is always important. We saw that play during our first replay. So not only are we looking at that, did he get his foot? But the officials are taking a look at if Daniels had enough laid hit. Man, that's a good one. Well, it looked like he got pushed into him, does it not? Yeah, Daniels but, taking a beat to that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, JT Daniels and Ford Wheaton are so fun to watch. Yeah. They're just so natural together. You can see the confidence that JT Daniels has in Ford Wheaton. So the late hit just saw, that was the one we saw just a little bit ago, about two or three minutes ago. There was another one on this touchdown. Yeah, I mean, they like the quarterback in, in this yeah. nowadays. That looked like it might be a little bit unnecessary. That's what Graham Harrell was talking to us about. Daniels took some hits in this game against Kansas. Bounce back, stayed in the game. After further review, it's been determined that the receiver's foot was out of bounds. It'll be second down in West Virginia. What? Call reversed. Saying Bryce Ford weak. Foot was out of bounds, no touchdown, and it's goal. Yeah, it's like his foot's on the way here. As close as it gets. It is. So, not quite fifth touchdown of the year for Bryce Fulton. Do they go right back to him? Why not, right? Working. They got the same coverage, press coverage by the lead. Bottom of the screen. Do they do it again? Daniels throws back to the end zone to call. Looking for Prather. Third and goal. Well, how mad would this be if Towson can end up holding West Virginia to three after they thought they just gave up six more ago? And it's a big point for this West Virginia offense. Get touchdowns in the red zone. You get to the yard line, you got to get in the end zone. Three points are not good enough. C.J. Donaldson in the backfield. He's the third down guy, the 240-pound freshman. He gets the ball here. Stiff arms. Powers to the goal line. No signal. And now there is touchdown West Virginia. Second of the day for C.J. Donaldson. And now the officials talking it over again. in your offensive line and in your running back, J. Donaldson, the hand on the four-yard line on third down. C.J. Donaldson just wills that to happen. That ball popped out there at the end, too, from C.J. Donaldson. But until it looks like he's over the goal line there. Running backs coach Chad Scott was talking about C.J. Thompson last game and just being the young guy, learn what to eat before the game. He said he was just eating McDonald's before the game in high school. He knew his first college game. didn't like the steak and the chicken parm and all the great <laughs> food he had for him. He didn't eat anything and got worn out. Uh, that sounds like a teen year old kid problem to me. Man, eating enough would not be an issue if I was at one of those buffets. <laughs> Casey Leg on after to make it 20 to 7 West Virginia. CJ Donovan with two touchdowns first half for freshman making a huge impact.
moments ago, Bob Hawkins was honored here at Virginia. He was entered in the Basketball Hall of Fame last week. We'll dive into that a little bit at halftime and, and talk about it more in depth. Pretty cool moment for a guy who is all West Virginia himself, and the people in Morgantown love this. Yeah, he's a Virginia icon. Obviously a great basketball coach. Morgantown went to West Virginia. Off to this place. Just a week ago, did into the Hall of Fame. Today he's watching this West Virginia football team at clinic up 21. Here's Hunter on the turn from the goal line. The curl around the corner and he gets just back to the 20-yard line. And that's where Towson's offense begins to drive. They are one of the best teams in all of FBS, Adam, in time of possession. They hold on to the ball a lot, but today, just three minutes and 26 seconds of total time of football. West Virginia has a more than 10-minute advantage on them. Yeah, they haven't had all much today. If they want to stay in the game, this drive is cool. they got to hold on to the ball, get some first downs. They use Pigram in the quarterback run game a little bit, let him get loose if he does best. A couple three for Towson. Their only score came on the 96-yard kickoff return for Deanna Hunter. This is Devin Matthews. Haven't seen a bunch of him. He's the starting running, but it's been Hunter with most of the touches going. Yeah, he's been a surprise for the Towson coaches. He was third string in the training camp and flashed all practice through scrimmages. It's great with the ball in his hands, and they're going to have to give him ball that they want to move the ball in this this West Virginia defense line that is pretty stout. Pigram on second and long. The clean pocket being flushed out. Pigram gets chipped down. He tried to get rid of it quickly. And I think the officials are saying down. Allinger was the one who put the pressure. You see Malinger off the side on the pass. Just a great job retracing his steps. And running big. Receiver number nine in the area. Oh, they're saying he got rid of the football. So instead of what could have been a third and about 15, much manageable, not easy, manageable at third and eight. What do you care, Adam? Yeah, if he does get rid of it, it's a great play. Yeah, he's down, isn't he? Yeah, it's close. We've had some close plays so far today. After first two, the quarterback's knee was down at the 15-yard line. It's third down. So something that was told us right before this game today, something that's new in college football, Adam, the ability for the play officials in the box to buzz down to the officials and change it all quickly, and I think that's exactly what just happened to you. That's great for the pace of the game. You have to wait for the replay to end, but despite actually being down, what an athletic <laughs> by Tyrell Pigram to get that ball out. You, you see what it brings to, the, to an offense. He's so athletic and elusive, but now he's got a third down and almost possible, but... Third and 18, Pigram was about to keep it, but a flag here. And this back up at even. Number 80. It's third down. So that third and almost impossible, I think, might have just become third and impossible. Yeah, this is not what you want to be if you're, if you're Rob Ambrose calling plays for talent right now. And, and they've only completed one pass so far, they just can't get anything going. Offense. Pegram keeps it an opening. It's all the way back out to 20, which is just near the original scrimmage, and it's fourth and long. Malinger, who had the sack a couple plays ago, makes the tackle here. Pegram does a great job there, just reading the defensive end. Clashes inside, pulls the ball. And has a good run, but nowhere close to third and forever that they needed. Riley Williams, punt formation. Reset back for the mountain. So 
Williams to punt it. Reese Smith back to turn it. Another low one. Williams and a fair catch called for by Smith at the three yard line. 28 7, West Virginia is up big and the defense comes back out of the field next. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus has an action packed day of college football. Afternoon action. At three Eastern team takes on Kansas State. And end of the evening at 7 Eastern. Arkansas Pine Bluff travels to Stillwater to face 8th Oklahoma State. All Big 12 now ESPN Plus. Sign up at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Apologize if you are having audio issues. At home. Some people are, some people aren't. We're currently working on that. We have an incredible crew here in Oregon Town that's trying to fix that as soon as possible. And West Virginia takes over this drive up to 28-7 already. Daniels puts it out. It's caught but an immediate tackle right at the line of scrimmage. It's Michael Lawfully, redshirt senior tight end who missed a lot of the last two years at him because of a knee injury, and he's just trying to get back into rhythm right now. Yeah, he's a big, long tight end, about 6'5", 160 pounds. It's the part for sure. We saw him yesterday, know, and he's an intimidating figure. Athletic and just went back from a couple of knee but Graham Harrell said to get him involved in this offense in the passing game. It's a John Mackey watch list. That goes to the best tight end in all of college football. And you've the last year, year and a half, and you're still on that list. It's impressive and tells you how good he is. This is Mathis. And a short gain here to set up third and five. You know, this week, Neil Brown and Graham Harrell and the running backs coach Scott talked about the run leaving yards on the field yeah. last week in Kansas. I think Chad Scott did something like 85 yards were left on the field, meaning that they didn't, they didn't make the right cuts, they didn't break tackles. And so far today, we've seen an impressive performance from Tony Mathis and C.J. Donaldson, <laughs> and even Justin. Yeah, those two guys especially have been running all over the field today. Third five empty set for Daniels. Over the middle, it's caught by Prather. And enough for the first down. His fifth catch of the game, his career high is six, and we've still got nine minutes to play in the second quarter. They want to get involved as much as they can more and more throughout the season. Yeah, it was a great play time by Graham Harrell there. All the running back, Tony, this doing motion in the backfield on a little swing pass and pulled out the linebacker. Putting up for Caden Prath. Just sits down in the zone. Jay Daniels puts it in there. Does so again this time with Braham. And he gets twisted down near the first down marker. Pickup of eight yards on first down. Braham's another junior college transfer. Baltimore, Maryland. Probably knows some of these talent players. Yeah. Another guy they want to get him in this offense. They have so many, so many skill players outside that they just find a way to get the ball to. Yeah, Graham Harrell, he's like, I don't feel like I have a lot of guys in our wide receiver room, but they're all really talented. Well, I feel like they do have a lot of guys in that wide receiver room. They're not. they got to be two of them. Math on second and short finds a hole, and he's down to the 27-yard line to move the chains before Mason Woods the tackle. This is Virginia offensive line. He's just doing a great job. You see Wyatt Willem there on the block, getting some movement. It's not easy on these on these inside zones to get movement because there's the finesse type block, but they've done a great job so far there. JT Daniels checking the play, flipping the running back. Austin sends five. Braytham, his second catch up drive. Down near the 20-yard line. Oh, that's Graham Harrell, that's the offensive coordinator. His first year here in West Virginia, so the last three at USC. And so he had a little bit of familiarity with A.T. Daniels. Daniels last season at USC was Graham Harrell. 
first, so they've worked together before. Yeah, Graham Hill is one of the best play callers in college football. He holds numerous NCAA racing records from his time at Texas Tech, and I think the question would be how long until he's head coach, he's going to have that opportunity soon. Young guy, too. Mathis. yards on the pickup here for Mathis. You see a great job by Michael Laughlin, the tight end, coming off of his double team to get some movement. And Tony Mathis having a great showing so far in the first half. See if they go right back to him here. He's done most of this damage to set him up on first and goal from the two. It is Mathis again, and it's a touchdown for Tony Mathis. Have a day, Tony Mathis. And have a day, whoever you are. That looks fun. You think you could toss me up like that? I'd probably be too <laughs> I, heavy for that. I most definitely <laughs> cannot toss you. We, we got a chance to flip that around and do a little something, but. Uh... <laughs> Point after is good as well. A 35 to 7 lead for West Virginia. Mathis set it up himself with a 17 yard run to make it first and goal. And one play later, he did the heavy work. He gets to finish it off as well with a touchdown. And West Virginia's up big. West Virginia fans a lot happier than what they've been each of the first two weeks. Their team up big. Five drives, five touchdowns, and a 35-7 lead over Towson. Here's the kickoff. And Hunter from the three. Another great return for him out near the 25-yard line. And that's where Towson's offense sets up for this drive. Trying to get something going offensively. And West Virginia, meanwhile, has a lot going offensively, and especially in way of running the football. This team has dominated on the ground in this first half. We talked about that offensive line from West Virginia being really the strength of the team. They've returned so many snaps on the O-line, and they came to play today. Pegram. Rolling out right side, tried to squeeze it into a small window, but it was knocked away. Marcus Floyd, who they raved about earlier this week, gets a hand in there. Towson getting Pigram on the move, which they talked about doing, and Marcus Floyd getting in there. Defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie said he has had the best week of practice he's seen from Floyd transferred from Murray State. He's played a lot of football in his career. Yeah, new to this program, trying to adjust their schemes, but they love what he's done for them. Pegram, completion, it's to Kendall James. Short pickup here to make it third down before Floyd makes a second consecutive play. To Kendall James is another one of those guys who's been through so much college football, started his career at Coastal Carolina, and then to Norfolk State, and then to Towson, then his career. Rob Ambrose told us he's one of the guys that has elite speed that we can get the ball to. But the question now is, do they have the time yeah. to get him the ball? Yeah, he talked a lot about not doing much dropbacks. It's going to be a lot of three-step drops, screen plays, getting it out quickly. This time, Pigram holds on to it a little longer, and it results in a sack for West Virginia's defense. Jordan Jefferson has been all over the place. Jordan Jefferson just dominating. This offensive line from Towson. 
He breaks through. High motor guy, just keeps playing. The coaches love him. I think we'll see Jordan Jefferson playing in the National Football League someday. Neil Brown told us that Kansas stayed away from him a lot last week. Didn't run the ball near near Jefferson, and uh, he's making up for for it and trying to make some plays today. Yeah, and you see the havoc that Dante Stills causes as well, which mm -hmm. opens up Jefferson to make plays like that. Williams has to punt it away on the fourth straight three and out for Towson's offense. 418 left in the second quarter, and West Virginia's got a chance to add on even more. Up big at home today. brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country to support follow CFP extra yard or scan the QR code for more first play out of the timeout play action James downfield holds it in inside the 10 yard line Sam James Getting after it down the field. Great protection by the offensive line. JT Daniels has time to step into that one. And Sam James playing that slot receiver position <laughs> for West Virginia. The same spot that Drake London played at USC mm -hmm. last year, making a big time play. Yeah, playing slot for Graham Harrell is a lot of fun. Daniels lofts it, end zone, and a little bit too deep. He was looking for a Laughlin, the 6-5 tight ends. We saw them practice that play yesterday when we were watching Owen Noah, but JT Daniels just lobs that thing up in the air, put a little bit too much air under it, trying to get it over the linebacker's head. You know, that's what you can do when you run the football the way West Virginia's running the football. You have all these play action opportunities, getting your tight end down the, down the field. Second and goal, C.J. Donaldson. Well, hey, that's not going to help his 16 yards per carry that he's averaging today. Yeah, he's probably like, don't give it to me unless it's a big play. Right. I don't care that I'm we're near the end zone. I, I don't need this. He's going to leave this game averaging 10 yards a pop <laughs> after three games. It's just so hard to believe that he is in his third game ever yeah. in his life, not just in college, in his life of playing running back. Yeah, true freshman from Miami, Florida, was a tight end in high school, brought him in to do just that here at West Virginia, but because of some depth issues in the running back room, they put him in there, and he's been great. So they got Bryce Ford Wheaton in the slot here, moving him around a little bit. Daniels wants to go that way. Too tall. Yeah, you see him just designing ways to get Bryce Ford Wheaton the ball, putting him in different spots. Daniels looks off to the right, comes back to the left. He knows he's going there the whole time. Just a little bit too high. If that ball's a little lower, I think Bryce Ford Wheaton may go up and grab that yeah. thing. So after the 51-yard pass play, on the first play of the drive, the offense stalls out, and they have to settle for the field goal attempts from 26 yards out, and it's through. So Casey Leg with the field goal makes it 38 to 7 now. West Virginia on top of Towson late in this second quarter. So I was trying to talk about this before I was so rudely interrupted on that 51 yard uh, passing play. Extra yard for Teachers Week is a the annual year is back to the school effort led by College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country to support Extra Yard for Teachers recognition and resources initiatives. Follow CFP Extra Yard 
or scan the QR code for more. And this guy knows all, all about teachers and the family, a long teaching lineage in Neil Brown's family. You know, there's so many similarities between being a coach and being a teacher. As a coach, you're molding young men, trying to teach them a game plan and offense. You gotta be a great teacher to do it. And we are certainly thankful for all the amazing teachers out there making our youth better every single day. Yeah, three of his four grandparents involved in education, both parents as well. And there's mom and dad in the stands taken in. His dad, Tom, a teacher, coach, and administrator. He's also the superintendent at Lexington Catholic High School in Kentucky until this past July when he retired. And his mom, Peggy, was an elementary school librarian as well. And like you've kind of mentioned before, a lot of coaching is teaching young men. Yeah, and a lot of coaches, when you think about it, come up to high school ranks where they're teachers before they're coaches. They're often gym teachers or history teachers and also coaching high school football. A lot of head coaches all over the country in college football started their careers as teachers in high school. And four straight three and outs for this Towson offense. They are trying to get anything going offensively. There's a first down completion. It's Daniel Thompson. That's what you need here if you're Towson. You need to get some momentum back. Mm -hmm. Easy completions. Get a first down here and relax a little bit. That was the biggest play of the day for Towson, going for seven yards. And now finally, they have a first down on the catch by to Kendall James. First one of the day for the Tigers, and now late in this first half, maybe Towson's offense is getting something going at him. Yeah, Tyrell Pigram feeling it a little bit now. He's settling in. Took him about a quarter and three-fourths, but two good completions here to start the drive. He's wanting three in a row. He won't get three in a row as he zips that over the middle and incomplete, targeting James. It's a guy into Kendall James that they said, hey, he's a really big threat. He just hasn't opened up for us yet. Once he does, he's going to be really good. Yeah, he's got great speed, can take the top off of the defense. I'm talking about a guy who had 4,000 yards receiving when he was in high school. I mean, this guy's <laughs> productive as heck. Second down play brought in by Thompson and makes this third down, excuse me, James, much more manageable. You know, this West Virginia secondary has been kind of the question mark. They lost Charles Woods, who's probably the best player in that in that defensive backfield. And they need guys to step up. Christian McLaurin, Marcus Floyd, Andrew Wilson Lamp, a lot of guys that need to play good football for him down the stretch. Third down. Get the conversion on the catch by James. Towson doing what they can here to make this thing interesting before halftime. Yeah, starting to feel pretty good. They're settling in. Rob Ambrose is getting in a, in a groove here, calling plays. Cross midfield, now you got to take care of the football. Time's not a huge issue. Incomplete. Wanted Brady McElhaney. And he had McElhaney, too, coming out of that in route. Tyrell Pigram's got to bring that ball down. It's been one of the things that he's gotten significantly better at, too, is just the ability to pass and make the right reads. Yeah, throughout his 18-year college football career, I'm just kidding, <laughs> seven years, he's gotten a much better as a passer. He's, he's improved. He's almost as old as you and I are. Incomplete, looking for Street. Pass intended for Darian Street. You know, this is the time... You, know, you got Towson, about a minute 23 left. You probably know they're going to throw the ball on third and 10. Where is Dante Stills? He may be the best player on the field. We haven't called his name a whole bunch. He needs to make a play and show why he's one of the best defensive linemen in the entire country. West Virginia gets a little pressure here. Pigram rolling out, and he's yanked down by who else? Dante Stills right on cue, Adam. Well, I manifested that one, huh? <laughs> Dante Stills, I mean, just one of the best defensive linemen in the game. Going to be a top NFL draft pick. He's too big. He's too strong. And West Virginia wants to call a timeout here to save some time and maybe add on to this lead. You, you see Stills on the left here. Just, just manhandling. 
the left guard and getting to Tyrell Pigram. You know, we were talking to talking to defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie, and, and he said the greatest thing about Dante Stills is how much he loves West Virginia. Yeah. You know, his he's got family ties. His brother Gary, his father Gary, his brother was Darius, the former defensive lineman, had a great career, and he, he plays for that logo on his helmet, the West Virginia logo. He's from the from the state of West Virginia, it means a lot to him, and he's going to need a huge, huge season for them. As they, as they get into this Big 12 play. It's significantly more uncommon nowadays, too, with the transfer portal and people entering that as much as they do, to have a guy who, like Jordan Leslie said, he plays for the logo and doesn't play for his name. Third sack of the day for this West Virginia offense. You know, the biggest thing for Stills, too, is just being consistent. He can dominate every single game. It's a fourth and 14, and they're going for it. Deep ball down the sideline, incomplete. Wanted Daniel Thompson downfield. Well, no, I was shocked they were going for that. Yeah, right. I, <laughs> we're talking about Dante. I thought Stills. they were running the punt team out. And, and I look up and we're going for our fourth down. All right. Yeah, it's an interesting strategy, and, and he actually had a decent throw here. Just a little bit outside the reach. McCormick on the coverage. The transfer from James Madison catching up and making a play. Got a little, got away little hands there, a little hands action, but interesting choice to go for that because now, I mean, West Virginia's got the ball in the plus territory with, a, with about a minute and 11 seconds left. Garrett Green, the backup quarterback, is in now for West Virginia. And he wanted Prather, but just a little bit wide of him on the throw. The Garrett Green's a guy that they they call him a package guy. He's the backup quarterback, but he'll get some snaps with the ones game to game. He can run the ball really well, but Grim Harrell said he can throw it too. Yeah. Don't let it fool you. And, and they, they always game plan a few plays for him every single week. Yeah, they said they have an entire package, an entire drive drawn up for him every single week. Whether they get there at times is to be determined, but it's Prather this time, and he completes it. That matches Caden Prather's career high with six catches, and we're not even to halftime. Just all these skilled players from West Virginia just make it so difficult for that Towson defensive back. Do they press? Do they play off? If you play off, you're giving them those six-yard hitch routes every single play, whether they run the, yeah. the outs, the hitches. So now third down, need four yards. Green takes off. This is the running capability we talked about. Garrett Green! And just shoved out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Design quarterback run for Garrett Green. It's a design quarterback draw. You see the offensive lineman getting out in front. Thomas Remack making the block for Garrett Green. Great call by Graham Harrell. Getting his quarterback in space. He got 39 yards on that run here to set up first and goal. Johnson and stacked up inside the two yard line. Well, we've seen two touchdown runs for Mathis today, two for CJ Donaldson, and now the third stringer, Justin Johnson, looking for his first. Yeah, and we'll see here on now on the two yard line. Do they let Garrett Green get out and get loose a little bit? Let him read something and get him on the perimeter. Yeah, Graham Harrell was kind of pumping up his passing ability and said he's not just a runner, but make no mistake, that's what Garrett Green is known for is his ability to run. Second down, he throws well short, and somebody got a hand on the defensive line. It was Trey Reese, the Indiana transfer. Trey Reese is probably the best pass rusher they have on defense. Played a lot of football at Indiana. Actually played defensive end there as transitioned to outside backer, kind of that rush edge kind of guy. He's been productive. 
And a lot of times when you transfer from a power five to an FCS, you don't get a lot of snaps. Reese was playing about 30 snaps a game at IU. Here's the carry, and it's a little bit short by Johnson. Makes it fourth and goal. Evan Rutkowski with the tackle to save the touchdown. And with nine seconds left before halftime, West Virginia takes the timeout. See if it's field goal unit or if the offense stays on this late to try to punch it in for six. Part of me thinks that they may uh, try to punch this thing in on the one yard line. Tell your offensive line, we better be able to get movement on the Towson <laughs> defensive line and we're in trouble when it comes to Big 12 play. That probably is the big strength for Towson on their defense is the defensive line play. They got Jesus Gibbs up there who's a second round NFL prospect. A couple other guys, but that's exactly the point. If you're not getting pushed against an FCS school, what's going to happen in the Big 12 games? Yeah, Jesus Gibbs is the guy we haven't talked about him much today. Haven't really called his name, but he's probably the highest graded NFL prospect on this Towson roster. He was he was on the athletics freaks list yeah. to start the season. It's a Big dude, 6'4", 280-some pounds. Started his career at South Carolina. And Neil Brown, West Virginia's head coach, even said he's one of the best guys you'll see on the field today, and that's regardless of what uniform he's wearing. Yeah, he said this guy would start at most Big 12 schools. Yeah. They're going for it. Offense stays on. They're two for two today on fourth down. Chance to go for three for three and score six more. You've got to think they're going to let. So play clock running down there at the end of the play, and they have to use a second consecutive timeout here before the fourth and goal play for Garrett Green and company. You've got to think they're going to let Garrett Green get loose here at some point. It's been three straight plays where he hasn't had the option to run the football. Yeah. Well, they've got C.J. Donaldson in there, too. He's the third down guy for them. It's a good thing to have options, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they've got plenty. Feeling good with a 38-7 lead is West Virginia. Here's Donaldson in for his third score of the first half. I'll tell you what, C.J. Donaldson has put college football on notice. The true freshman from Miami, Florida. It's just too easy. Another great job by the West Virginia offensive line. That hole, I could have run through that thing. Wide I could have crawled through that thing. <laughs> it's just such an interesting story to be a true freshman and, and what a first three games of his college football career. Man, he's been phenomenal. Top five in all of college football in yards per carry. It's been huge for them, and Casey Leg makes it 45-7. I mean, a guy that they didn't even think was going to play the position. They didn't have him as a running back. They didn't scout him as that, didn't recruit him as that. It's probably the third position they were going to put him at. Thought he was a tight end or wide receiver and said, you know what? I think we might see something in this guy being able to run the football. Yeah, and C.J. Donaldson wasn't highly recruited out of high school either. He's teammates with West Virginia outside linebacker Travius Lathan, who was a big-time recruit from the same high school in Miami, Florida, called Glover Prep. And they were recruiting Travis Latham. And then they saw this kid, C.J. Donaldson. They, the, the two kids became a package deal. They got both of them. And now C.J. Donaldson, who they thought was going to be a tight end H-back, maybe playing a little bit of receiver, probably going to redshirt him, is now one of the best players on the football field. Football field. Yeah, I don't see a redshirt year coming anytime, anytime soon for this guy now. Uh, 
third rushing touchdown of the day for C.J. Donaldson. Roadhouse with a squib kick here with six seconds to play before halftime. It's Diego Hunter. And the clock hits zeros here of the second half. There is a flag. Both teams are heading to the locker room and having to be held up real quick. Personal foul, face mask, return team number four. 15 yard penalty, and by rule, we'll have an untimed down. It's first down. All right, well, face mask means this half is going to be one play longer. Untimed down coming up for Towson. And if you're West Virginia head coach Neil Brown right now, I mean, you got to be happy with your guys. You, you face some adversity. You play two football games that you could have won. The pit game came down to the last play of the game. They ruled that completion or the, the, the pass, an incomplete pass down the middle of the field. And, and uh, then the Kansas game, you throw a pick six to end it in overtime. To come out here and respond with this kind of performance is impressive, and it, it shows the, the tenacity of this West Virginia roster. Pegram drops it off. Here's James. And it gets tackled near the 40 yard line for the final play of this first half. 45 7, all West Virginia Mountaineers have looked good. Yeah, they look great. They dominated this entire game. This is what you wanted. We talked about early in the, early in the game, Noah, but you have a chance to get some swagger, get some mojo, and then go into the rest of the season. I mean, West Virginia's schedule does not get any easier. They go on the road Thursday night, about five days from today to Virginia Tech. They go to Texas. They play Baylor. They play a Texas Tech team that's really good. So it's not going to be an easy year for Neil Brown or the West Virginia team, but they need, they need this win today. They need a performance that they just dominate to get yeah, things going. That mojo is coming back a little bit for West Virginia, up 45 to seven here at halftime. We'll touch on Bob Huggins being inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame when we come back here at halftime. It has been all West Virginia in this offense, up 45 to seven in front of the home fans today on ESPN+. Plus. Halftime in Morgantown with West Virginia in a big lead over FCS Towson, 45 to 7 at the break. Hello, everyone, and welcome back inside the booth here in Morgantown. Three time All American Adam Brenneman, Noah Reed with you. West Virginia fans, exhale. I get it. Week one and week two, it wasn't pretty, right? The 0 2 start. Offense has it figured out today. Yeah, well, they responded to the adversity well, and the name of the game has been the offense 415 yards of offense. In the first half, JT Daniels has managed this game, and CJ Donaldson has been big time all day. Bryce Ford Wheaton making some huge plays. Now, in the second half, if Towson wants to have a chance, Tyrell Pigram's going to have to come to play. Yeah, CJ Donaldson with the three touchdowns on the ground. It's really been everybody kicking in and chipping in for this West Virginia offense as well. Defense has played well, too. The only seven points that's been given up was actually on a kickoff return, so defense getting stops, too. Yeah, Dante Stills has showed up, Justin Jefferson in the interior of the defensive line, but the most impressive part has been this West Virginia secondary which was a big question mark coming into this game but they came to play today. Yeah, we'll take a look now at our first half highlights. It's been a lot of running game for this uh, West Virginia team but they started with the pass and Caden Prather hauling in a touchdown. Yeah Caden Prather big long athlete. He's one of the best athletes on the entire field and he's made some huge plays today. And then this right here, right after the touchdown, we thought, uh-oh, Towson may be having something going on. A 96-yard kickoff return for Diego Hunter to tie the game. Yeah, Diego Hunter has been maybe the only bright spot for Towson so far today. And, <laughs> and after after this happened, this entire stadium was sweating a little bit. <laughs> kind of like you when you were going to the field again. But then the running backs all started getting going. Mathis first, Donaldson next, and really kind of took off. Yeah, it's great to see Tony Mathis get involved and show what he can do. Again, was the leading returning rusher this season. Him and Donaldson is an impressive one-two yeah. punch. Yeah, it sure is. Two touchdowns for Mathis. Three for this guy, C.J. Donaldson. 
who's averaging almost nine yards a carry on the season. The true freshman has been doing what he's doing the first couple games. Yeah, now he's averaging 12 yards a pop today. <laughs> he's too big. He's too strong. He is a special athlete, and everyone in college football is going to know his name pretty soon. Here's a look at the first half stats, and uh, well, that's quite a stark difference. Yeah, well, we talked about this early in the game, controlling the football for Towson. That is not controlling the football. Nine minutes of possession is not what you want. They've been so good at that through their first two games, but they just haven't had the ball at all today. They can't They can't convert on third down, one of six on third down. You're not going to win many football games with those kind of numbers. Look at those rushing numbers. 235 for West Virginia, minus three for Towson in the first half, and that's probably why the scoreboard reads 45 to seven. A lot of those rushing yards have come from this guy CJ Donaldson and not only in today's game but also the first few weeks he ran all over Pitt in his first career collegiate game. Yeah his first career collegiate game and his first game ever at running back just such an impressive story and his development has been one of the things that's gonna drive this West Virginia offense into big 12 play here soon but he has been just dominant today. Almost 100 yards on only eight carries today and three of those eight have found the end zone. West Virginia started with the football and offense to begin the game, so set to kick it away now, and Towson's offense will come on the field in desperate need of some points. Here's Diego Hunter. Had the kickoff return for a touchdown earlier today and got a block out to the 30-yard line where they start this drive. Well, there was almost a non-existent offense for Towson almost the entire first half. But finally, in that final drive of the first half, Adam finally got something clicking. Yeah, they got a little bit of mojo, and they were moving the ball. But no, you're not going to win many football games when you have negative rushing yards in the first half of a ball game. They've got to be able to run the football and control this clock a little bit. Yeah, if you're looking for a little bit of some silver lining for Coach Ambrose and his team, nearly half of Towson's points this year have been scored in the third quarter. They're really good out of the break. That's the backup quarterback, Scott Smith, who begins this drive, and Hunter on the first touch weaves out for three yards. Yeah, well, Scott Smith was the starter in week one for Towson. He rotated with Pigram that first game and then after that win against Bucknell it was Tyrell Pigram's team but looks like they're going to see what Scott Smith can do. Only six passes on the season for Smith but that's who they're going with down 45 seven to start this third quarter. He fakes the toss keeps it himself and there is nothing there before he gets taken down after a short gain by Lee Koba. How about the story that is Lee Koba? He's born in Ghana, moved to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and nobody knew how to pronounce his name when he was young. And when he first started reading Adam, he pronounced it Koba. And so everyone said, all right, that's what your last name is, Koba. Yeah, well, we were trying to figure out how to pronounce it this week, and Koba makes it pretty easy. <laughs> it's a great story, and, and it's a transfer from Eastern Mississippi Community College. They're excited about him. And the pass is incomplete. He was looking for Perkins, the freshman, and it brings up fourth down. Isaiah Perkins is a guy that, uh, that they were surprised about in training camp. He's a true freshman, CAA Rookie of the Week last week with 81 receiving yards. He's been really good, but another three and out for this Towson offense. That's almost been the story all game long. Only one drive for Towson's offense has not been a three and out today. So Rob Ambrose in that offense that he leads struggling quite a bit today against West Virginia's defense. Williams the punt and a good one as Smith has to backpedal in near the 15 yard line for the fair catch. You know something that Neil Brown has got to be happy about is is the discipline that this West Virginia team shown through the first half only one penalty and that's been a. Uh, a sticking point the last couple weeks. They had a roughing the passer penalty last week, which was just pretty egregious and, and hurt their chances a ton in that ball game. They've had some procedure penalties, had a fourth and one false start a couple weeks ago. So the discipline so far has been good, and, and it looks like they got this momentum and things going back in the right direction a little bit. And they've scored on every offensive possession today. 
Six touchdowns and a field goal for this Mountaineers offense. And Garrett Green, the backup quarterback who finished the second quarter, is back out there taking the snaps here to begin the third. Donaldson just plows right through that defensive line of Towson. And Steed makes the tackle after a four-yard pickup. And it would appear that JT Daniels' day is done here. Garrett Green coming out to start the first drive of the second half. There's JT Daniels right there. Didn't even play an entire half and still went 16 to 24, 174 yards through a touchdown as well. Quick day of work for him if that ends up being the case where he's done. Mathis. And that might be a guy too in Tony Mathis. He's he's the first string running back. He's the starter right Adam. He's got the most touches of anybody on the team, but they're wanting a little bit more out of him. Yeah, he, he gets almost over half of the carries for this offense and you know the coaches just want to see him hit the hole a little bit harder. Stop thinking so much and with CJ Donaldson. He's just gotten so much of the love publicly over yeah. the last two weeks. And they said with Mathis that it felt like he was just pressing a little bit and too, trying to do too much last week. And Neil Brown said what he does is enough. He doesn't have to be anything extra than what he is. We want him to just get back to who he is. Yeah, he's extremely talented. He ran track in high school. He can run with the best of them, can catch the ball in the backfield. He's a really, really good player. West Virginia's going for this on fourth down from the 25. They are three of three today. And that's right near the marker. So did Mathis get enough? And the signal is yes. Make it four for four on fourth down for the Mountaineers. I've been impressed with Graham Harrell and, and the plan he put together. Getting all his guys touches. Mathis has had a day. Donaldson, he's gotten Bryce Ford Wheaton some touches. Caden Prather. Not easy to spread the ball around like that. You asked him what his philosophy was, and he said, I don't know, get my best players the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, coach. It's a good idea. Quarterback keeper this time from Green. We saw the running ability on display when he had a 38-yard run in the first half, and he gets a lot here on first down as well, a pickup of nine. Now, Graham Harrell was saying this week, about being able to just let your players play fast. Keep it simple. Don't make things too difficult. Green deep ball. Wide open target. And Braham who dives and just couldn't reel it in. Oh, that would have been spectacular. Man, he was wide open. Garrett Green's going to want to have that one back. There is no one within 30 yards of him. Oh, he oh, almost man, gets it. He, oh, he did initially. Look at Garrett Green. He thought he completed that. Look at him. He's, <laughs> he's talking smack, and then he turns around, and it's incomplete. That's a bad feeling. That's uh, a bad feeling. <laughs> Math this one more time for the first down. You ever have anything happen that like that in your career? I know you're not a quarterback and tight end, but talking smack, you think something happened and it actually didn't go your way? No, I was a big talker on the field, man. <laughs> I was talking. I, I might as well have been calling the game down there. And, uh, yeah, there are a few of those. There are a few of those moments. But, you know, when I was playing, I, I didn't want to block anyone too much. It was more more just catching the ball. You're a pretty boy. You just wanted all the, you wanted all the receptions that it amounted to. Exactly. All right. I'm the opposite of Michael Laughlin. I'm the opposite. <laughs> Coach did say we had the same haircut on the conference call today or the, this week. Yeah, so he was maybe, impressed. Maybe he thinks I'm a pretty boy, too. We'll see. Here's a completion. That's Jeremiah Aaron on his first catch. You know, back to playing fast in this Graham Harrell offense. Graham Harrell said something which I thought was really good this week. He said, if we recruit a fast player and then he plays slow in our system, we're doing that kid a disservice. Yeah. It's got to be simple enough. Uh, to let them play fast and go roll and we have seen almost every skill guy on their roster play extremely fast today I Got a feeling we're gonna see even more guys too, probably into the third and fourth string Mathis Nowhere to go, but the second effort on the spin might just be enough to move the sticks And a late late flag comes in
Got Doug Nestor chopping it up with the ref a little bit, pleading his case. The transfer from Virginia Tech. This offensive line from West Virginia has been good. On sportsmanlike conduct, defense number seven, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's number seven's first on sportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. So Faison, who made the tackle, end up getting an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty afterwards and pushes this West Virginia offense up 15 yards further as if they needed any help today. Rob, Rob Ambrose is not happy. There's number seven, middle of your screen. Faison on the tackle. See if we get anything here. It's like a little yeah. bit of extracurricular activities yeah, going on down there under the pile. He was giving him the business. It's first down. Well, that was nice of Virginia to give five of those yards back. No Brown's like, come on, man. <laughs> you, you were just talking too. no penalties really against them. They were going great. Not that this one's a backbreaker I've been, by I've been any means. manifesting everything today. Man. <laughs> Green fires. Braham squeezes through two defenders and down to the 10 yard line. 31 yards to Braham before Tops made the tackle, but it's all the way down near the 10 yard line. You see them again just playing 10 yards off. Simple curl route by Braham, and Garrett Green puts it on them. The money around his chest. Braham didn't have any catches Official in the first two out. games. And now getting involved plenty today against Towson and an official's timeout right now. And Braham, the transfer from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. A lot of junior college, community college transfers on this West Virginia roster. About 30 some new guys, a lot of roster turnover. And uh, Neil Brown talked about the challenges of, of getting guys to play together, to mesh together in, in a short period of time, because a lot of them get there in July and August. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with so much turnover, you only have about a month, maybe two, with your full roster. Green takes off. Green scores! <laughs> Eleven yards from Garrett Green and West Virginia is piling on here in the third quarter. Garrett Green getting some love and some action as well. Everyone's having a day today. Garrett Green talking to Neil Brown, telling him what he saw. Great design there by Greg Harrell, a design quarterback run, letting Garrett Green does what he does do best. He runs the football. Seen a couple big runs, had the 38 yarder in the first half, now an 11 yard touchdown run. Play game, offense, five yard penalty. We'll try for point. I mean, these are just the little things, right? You, you, you only put 10 guys out there for your extra point team. Running out late calls the delay of game. It's not a big deal in a game like this, but those are the kind of things that lose you football games when you're playing teams like Virginia Tech in Texas. So it's been Casey Leg kicking the extra points, but now Parker Grothaus gets his first one and it clangs off the upright. Getting a little sloppy here for West Virginia. Well, West Virginia doesn't get the extra point, but they do get the touchdown in the first drive of the third quarter. The backup quarterback, Garrett Green, running it in from 11 yards out, and West Virginia is rolling here in the third quarter. A 51 to 7 Mountaineers playing well today.
Welcome back to Morgantown here in the third quarter and West Virginia's offense has had the ball eight times and they've scored eight times. Seven touchdowns and a field goal and feeling pretty good about themselves right now at 51 to seven. Yeah, when we talked to Neil Brown this week, he said when bad things happen, you either all come together or you all break apart. And it looks like from today's performance, they have come together. Played well on offense, well on defense. Maybe the only part you can nitpick is the special teams because the guy who just returned that kick had himself a 96 yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the first quarter. Let's take a look back at what we just saw on the touchdown run, though, from Garrett Green. You're really impressed with the blocking of Math Mathis here. Yeah, you're going to see Justin Johnson, thought it was Mathis, with the lead block on the quarterback draw. And that's what this running back room is so good at. They get these touches. They're running for the big yards and big touchdowns. But the little things, blocking the Mike linebacker is not an easy block on that quarterback draw. That was a big play by Justin Johnson. Oh, here's a big run on the first play of the drive for Towson. Devin Matthews, the starting running back who hasn't seen many touches today, explodes for a big one here. Finally, a first first down on the ground for Towson. Just needs some kind of positive momentum. Looks like they're sticking with Scott Smith for this drive. Up until that play, Towson had negative rushing yards. Try it on the ground one more time. And Matthews back to the line of scrimmage. So what, what does that tell you about Towson that they're staying with Smith, the backup quarterback now, and, and not with Pigram, who's been the start of the last couple weeks? You know, normally uh, when you get in the second half and you're getting blown out, uh, you normally would keep your starters in there for at least a few drives in, this, in the second half just to show a, a breath of life. But it looks like they may be going with Scott Smith as maybe the guy in the future. He just has to throw it away here on second down. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket and made the line of scrimmage. You know, Noah, sometimes in these quarterback competitions, it's just about momentum, and it's about who kind of has things going. Tyrell Pagram, he didn't play bad today. West Virginia is just better than they are, and right. sometimes you need to change things up and and uh, give, your, give your offense a new spark of energy, and I think Tyrell Pagram found, uh, fell victim to that today. One of seven on third down is Towson, and they've got a third and ten. Smith keeps, fooled the defense, hurdles over a man near the marker. Whoa. Scott Smith getting loose a little bit? <laughs> I guess so. I didn't know he was a dual threat quarterback. Blew a tire as well. Look at him get up in the air. It's about a 35-inch vertical, I think, from my estimate. Clears Floyd here. Man. Fourth and one. Offense staying on with Smith. Low snap. Got it off to Matthews, who gets the first down and a fourth down conversion as he gets an extra push near midfield. You know, those are the kind of plays where you're playing an FCS school. Yeah. West Virginia has their twos in there, it looks like, a defensive line, but you'd love to see him get some more push against this Towson offensive line and not give up six yards on fourth and one. Hunter. Another good run on first down for Towson. Malachi Ruffin makes his second tackle this drive. For, for Towson, what's it about in situations like this? 51-7, to seven, down big, obviously, at a Power 5 school. What are you looking for now? Yeah, it's about heart. What are we made of? You know, this is this Towson football team is a good team. They're, they're going to do really well in the CAA this year. Rob Ambrose has done a great job with this program. They're a good team. And now, you know, how much attitude do they have when they're getting blown out on the road? Math, Matthews gets the first down. Something that they haven't faced this year is their defense kind of getting torn apart a little bit. Gave up 13 in week one, gave up just 21 last week, and a little bit of a different monster with West Virginia out of the Big 12. And now for West Virginia, you know, you're winning this game. It's going to end in a win. Let's, like, not be sloppy here. You got guys running on late, penalties. 
Smith. Receiver wasn't ready for it. He wanted to Kendall James. But it's about focus. You know, does your team mature enough to focus when you're up big? It's hot out. Just trying to get out of here without any injuries. You know, you got to not have these self-inflicted wounds because they come back to bite you. So you had mentioned that a lot of the second stringers are on the field, so you can kind of say, well, you know, the starters weren't that way. But who knows? Some of these guys play meaningful minutes in games and may need to play more minutes as well. They play a ton, and in a defense that has so many moving parts and new faces, these these snaps are critical. Matthews, wide open hole. He wants to hurdle somebody. He said, let me get in on the action, Scott Smith. Malachi Ruffin. So he went over the top of. These guys are some athletes. Yeah, what would have been a track meet here doing some hurdles? <laughs> That's an impressive play by Matthews. If you end up like that, though, in the 100 meter hurdles, that's not a good that's thing. That's not good. It's not what you want. Matthews gets another touch. And on third and short, that's enough to move the chains. Hey, did you, could you used to get this high when you were playing, Adam? I was just thinking. I, I don't know if I would have ever tried hurdling. <laughs> Ruffin does a good job there of, of keeping his head up. That's what, when you get hurdled against, that, what happens is the defensive back puts their head down, tries to dive at the ankles, and the, and the running back sees it. But Ruffin does a good job recovering and ends up planting <laughs> Matthews on the ground. Smith on the slant route, too tall. For Isaiah Perkins. That's the, the freshman Isaiah Perkins, who was the conference newcomer of the year after week one when he had six catches, 81 yards, and he's been held silent today against West Virginia's defense. Yeah, they got to find ways to get him the ball. And Rob Ambrose, head coach, but is also the play caller of this offense, told us you know, he might have been the freshman of the week last week, but he may end up being a freshman of the year in the yeah. CAA. He's that talented and you know, he just doesn't have mental errors. He's smart for being a true freshman. He's impressed a lot of people around this Towson program. Football's loose. Smith lost it, and it looks like West Virginia falls on it. Rolling on the field, a fumble recovered by the defense. It's first down. Caden Beiser comes up with the football after it was jarred loose. And West Virginia's defense forces the turnover. Caden Beiser from Morgantown, West Virginia, getting on the ball. 51-7, West Virginia leads it. West Virginia's defense comes up with a big play with Towson driving. They're able to get the fumble and recover it too, Adam. You're going to see Taj Alston, number 12, get off the block and get his hand in there and strip the football. Great play. Punching that thing out. Talking to Jordan Leslie, he talked about creating turnovers, such an important part of this game. And Taj Alston's a guy who's played a lot of football for him, second on the team last year with 11 tackles for loss. They need him to have a great season this defense is going to hold up in the Big 12 and good to see him recover he had he had the tough penalty last week against Kansas the roughing the passer that that changed the game Mathis gets the first touch out of the turnover it's also Will Crowder who's in at the quarterback spot now too a redshirt freshman from Alabama thought we might see Nico Marchiol who is listed as the third stringer, but instead Crowder's in there now for West Virginia. Keeps it, throws it outside. And Reese Smith with his first reception of the day. Well, Will Crowder is a guy they're excited about developing in that quarterback position. Has only been at West Virginia for a year. Went to Alabama to get him. He's talented. He's got a big arm. 6'2". He reminds me a lot when he throws of JT Daniels. I know they got a big quarterback room that with a <laughs> bunch of talent. Here's Crowder to throw. 
caught. Jeremiah Aaron moves the sticks. All right, it's only three plays or so in, but Will Crowder able to throw this football around a little bit. Yeah, Will Crowder looks good, looks comfortable. And these reps are so important for you for your young guys. And yeah. with the with the NCAA redshirt rule where you can play your guys in some games and still redshirt them. Crowder redshirted last year and now they're getting him some some play time in the game just builds confidence. First down Crowder again. Braham spins away from one tackler and down near the 45 yard line. You know Noah Braham's a guy that they're going to need him to step up throughout this season. You know, as fast as West Virginia plays on offense and as as high tempo as they play, the receivers can't play every snap. Bryce Flo Wheaton needs a break. Caden Prather needs a break. So Braham's going to have to step up throughout Big 12 play. He's certainly stepped up today. Yeah, playing really well. Didn't have any catches coming into the week. Got another one here on the quick screen and hops out of bounds. The 41 yard line. That's a guy they really like too. I mean coaches were talking to us this week and of course they brought up the Bryce Ford Wheatons the Sam James the the Caden Prathers but they kept coming back to Braham as well and they think hey he can be something special for us. Yeah all, all those backup receivers who are listed as backups but they play a lot of football. I mean Jeremiah Aaron Cortez Braham talk about guys like Reese Smith who's in there right now at the slot position. They need to be able to play for him and play meaningful minutes um, because again as fast as they go their receivers need a break every now and then. This time they keep it on the ground with Johnson. And Faison and Schaefer in on the tackle near the line of scrimmage. See Crowder fixing fixing his helmet as well helping Justin Johnson out a little bit. <laughs> Teammates great chemistry he doubles as the equipment manager as well. <laughs> Will Crowder, known good guy. Final play of the quarter. Johnson skipping through. And down near the line of game, line to game. This is the end of the third quarter. Well, three quarters through here in Morgantown and West Virginia has dominated all day long, up 51 to 7. Now over Towson as we head to the fourth. A little bit of a better buzz around Morgantown than what we've seen in weeks one and week two. 51 to seven, the Mountaineers have been dominant from the time this game started, Adam. Yeah, it's been an impressive showing and Again, they're now have some momentum back with this program to take it the rest of the season. The first carry for Jalen Anderson now. Fourth different ball carrier that we've seen today for West Virginia. And the day is probably done for the top two. And a pretty good day for both of them. Donaldson and Mathis both over 100 yards rushing. 200 plus yards rushing, five total touchdowns. They have put everyone on notice. This may be one of the best running back rooms in all of college football, certainly in the Big 12. And I think it's it's going to be interesting to see Graham Harrell and how he uses those two. Does he scheme up ways to get them both on the field at the same time? Yeah. Get a little two back personnel. You can use Donaldson in the slot. Oh, what a move to get away from it. Crowder. Making something out of nothing. Uh, how about the day again for Donaldson? The nine carries 101 yards. That's over 11 yards a carry. Came in today, one of the best in the country at almost nine yards a touch. This true freshman is just crushing. Player. Yeah, and for as big as he is at 6'2", 230 pounds, the, the breakaway speed to break the 82-yard touchdown is what's most impressive. He's not just a guy who you can throw the ball to. He puts his shoulder down on third and short, fourth and short, but he can break the long one. It's been a really good showing for him and, and Tony Mathis as well. Yeah, both of those guys over 100 today and 
Neil Brown said, C.J. Donaldson, we planned on in week one just getting him a few carries, get him acclimated to the college game, and he went seven carries, 125 yards, and said he showed us he deserved more of a workload. And they've given that to him each of the last two weeks. Anderson again, another short run. You know, Noah, the biggest issue this West Virginia offense may have is is there's there's only one football. <laughs> you got too many playmakers. There's so many different guys they got to get the ball to. But I, if there's anyone who can do it, it's Graham Harrell. Yeah. He'll figure it out. So that's an okay problem to have, I think, sometimes, right? You, you don't mind when you've got a lot you, of guys to get the ball to. You don't to. want it the other way around, I'll <laughs> tell you that. I keep going back to C.J. Donaldson and that story about him not eating enough food before the game last week. <laughs> Just such a such a young pup story, but he's maturing right before our eyes. Yeah, he sure is. Here's the throw from Crowder. Connects with Reese Smith. There is a flag on the play, too, that we'll have to check in on. Downfield on a pass play, number 58, five yard penalty, third down. That's Nick Malone, a legal receiver downfield. You know, Will Crowder has looked good in his in his couple of possessions here. Escaped the sack a couple plays ago. Great throw there to Reese Smith. And the hardest part in college football now is keeping these backup quarterbacks in your program with the transfer portal. <laughs> I think, I think that's any position, right? Anybody who's not the starter probably has looking at the transfer portal. Crowder getting snaps today. Deep ball wants Smith again. Oh, man! What a catch from Reese Smith! What a catch and what a throw by Will Crowder putting it on the outside shoulder. He just lays that thing up there. Perfect ball placement and Reese Smith. Whew. That is athleticism. Wow. Reese Smith went to the same high school as Neil Brown. Yeah, Boyle County High School in Kentucky. Anderson gets the extra push. Not quite in. He's down inside the one. Yeah, with Reese Smith, they said, we, we have to find out ways to get this guy more involved. Well, you, you make catches like that, you're, you're going to get a lot more snaps. They won't necessarily have to figure out ways to get you in. Yeah, he's certainly helping his calls with a catch like that. that. That's one of the toughest plays as a receiver when you have to flip your hips around midair and come down near the sideline and have the awareness to get your knee in bounds. That was an impressive play. Lined up in the slot here, but that play will not happen. Looks like someone got a little anxious. Ball start. Offense, number 58, five-yard penalty, second down. And so Nick Malone was the ineligible man downfield a couple plays ago. He's got the false start now. Backs up this West Virginia offense just outside the five-yard line. Penalty. Mountaineers looking to find the end zone for the eighth time today. An offense that hasn't been stopped all day. To throw again to Aaron, pulls it in. Touchdown, West Virginia. There is a flag all the way back at the 20-yard line. But for the time being, a touchdown pass to Aaron. Rolling on the field is a touchdown. Personal foul, roughing a passer. Defense number 17. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. We'll try for a point. Kai Smith there whistled for that late hit. Tell you what, Will Crowder came to play. Yeah, he did. You see the late hit here by Mackay Smith. That's something you can't do. 
in, in the day and age of football now protecting the quarterbacks but Will Crowder Jeremiah Aaron perfect ball placement and another touchdown for West Virginia and now a 51 point lead for the Mountaineers. Great catch by Reese Smith getting it into his knee on the ground. 58 to 7, West Virginia dominating. Just smiling and cheering in the stadium today for West Virginia fans up by 51 on Towson. And in fact, Adam, it's 51 unanswered because this game was 7 to 7 about four minutes into it. Yeah, no. If you're Rob Ambrose and Towson, you just want to have some heart on this drive. <laughs> yeah. Just put some points on the board, get a first down or two. And because of the penalty on the roughing the passer. Kickoff sails way out of the end zone. And a touchback to start Towson's drive when we come back. We haven't taken enough commercials recently. We're going to take one more. Hope you'll join us on the other side. Fifty eight to seven West Virginia up big sometimes when your fans are filing out early it's a bad thing today it's a good thing because this game is well decided here early in the fourth quarter but coming into the week things weren't so pretty around Morgantown here Adam it was uh, a little bit of a struggle starting 0 and 2 there was some known talks about Neil Brown and what was going on with the head coach and uh, Shane Lyons on Monday the athletic director made this statement where he pretty much said hey we understand we're not meeting expectations and there's 10 games left for us to figure out exactly what we're going to do to try to meet those. Yeah well anytime you start the season 0 and 2 you lose your biggest rival in Pitt and then you lose to Kansas the talk isn't going to be positive wasn't exactly the strongest vote of confidence by Shane Lyons but that's the day and age of college football we're in you got to win and you got to win now. Remember Neil Brown got an extension last year yeah. from Shane Lyons and you know this is a the start they needed to get things going back a little bit and get some momentum back and it looks like they've got it. Well, that's exactly what I was just going to say is we're showing you that because it's kind of the opposite right now right West Virginia came out here made the statement big win to be able to take down you know Towson a team that they're supposed to be but the, the manner in which they did it has been pretty impressive today. Yeah it's been extremely impressive and, and their schedule the rest of the year as we talked about is not easy. So this game today was was big again just to get some mojo some confidence some swagger and get feeling good about yourselves again. It, it, it's tough walking around a football building after two losses is not a fun experience. You got coaches everywhere who are upset. So th this this performance although it's against an FCS team is big for them. As Smith keeps it picks up the first down. Yeah you, you talked about that schedule. It's a quick turnaround. Five days of rest is all they get and then on Friday. They're on the road or Thursday rather on the road taking on Virginia Tech. They've got Texas after that Baylor the game after that. And it was uh, there's a lot of big games coming up a lot of tough games coming up and so a performance like this for the Mountaineers very much what they needed. Murray. And he gets driven out to the sideline. Oh, football came loose, but they blow the play down. Rolling on the field is that the running back's progress was stopped. It's second down. You mentioned the schedule, Adam, and uh, this is kind of what it looks like coming up next for West Virginia, right? Thursday on the road on ESPN against Virginia Tech, but then you got back to back ranked opponents the following weeks after that. Yeah, there aren't many, if any, easy wins on that schedule moving forward for West Virginia. That's the life in the Big 12, but you know, that Virginia Tech game, a Thursday night, you know, what a lot of times fans don't realize, just the quick turnaround. They, they may yeah. not even watch this tape, they, they'll probably go in tomorrow. Because tomorrow is like a typical, uh, typical Monday now for them on 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 a game week during or that plays on Saturday. So it's a quick turnaround. It, it, you have to adjust everything in your program. You're only going to get one full physical day of practice. But good thing is for West Virginia, both teams are dealing with it as well. Yeah. You almost got to feel like 
next week for West Virginia and Neil Brown is as close to a must win game as as you get in college football going to Virginia Tech a program that got off to a slow start losing to Old Dominion in week one here on a third and long a short run for Bangda Beiser who had the fumble recovery a couple drives ago makes the stop here to bring up fourth down yeah this win uh, will uh, will keep people happy for a week but then you play against Virginia Tech next week and you don't put together a good performance well people are going to be talking again yeah as we talked about does not get any easier after that so right now Neil Brown is holding his breath every play hoping no one gets hurt yeah <laughs> no kidding <laughs> he got JT Daniels out of there about as fast <laughs> yeah. as humanly possible yeah. they went up 30 he yanked them out right away yeah Number usually nine, usually your starter eight, plays eight, eight, at least the whole first half and maybe some into the third quarter no about halfway through the second quarter he was pulled out this is Preston Fox on the return sheds one Preston Fox with a seam and gets taken down by the ankles after crossing the 40 yard line and on his first punt return of the day a pretty impressive one to start up the drive for Western West Virginia late fourth quarter Mountaineers rolling. No idea what's going on out in the parking lot, but I guess that looks like a fun time, right? Yeah, I've never seen more trash in my life. <laughs> but no, you can handle the next seven minutes, right? I'm yeah. going to head on out yeah. there, start tailgating a little bit. Yeah, you go have yourself some fun, <laughs> all right? You've earned it. Great work today. Fourth quarterback of the day that we've seen for West Virginia. Marky Ol with his first completion of the day on his first attempt. And it's to Preston Fox, who just had the 30 yard punt return. Mark Yole is a guy they are really excited about. No, we talked to him yesterday at practice for a little bit. He's a true freshman from Chandler, Arizona. Originally was in Colorado, switched high schools during the whole COVID time, was trying to figure out where he could play after some canceled seasons. And big time recruit chose West Virginia over Florida State, Arizona State. And this guy could be the quarterback of the future. Is Anderson on the run? Big yards for him for the first down. You were on the coaching staff at Arizona State and you were recruiting him and it really came down to a battle of Arizona State and West Virginia. Yeah, we recruited him, recruited him hard. He's extremely talented. You know, the thing with him is he's a left-handed quarterback mm -hmm. and a lot of programs don't want lefties because you got to flip your whole offense around based on left-handed quarterback and it, the ball spins a different way and receivers complain about it. But with him, he's just too talented. He's too talented to ignore. Got a deep ball down the sideline here and overthrows his receiver. I mean, we're talking about a guy that had, I mean, he had offers from every school in America. Yeah. Everyone wanted this kid. Arizona Gatorade Player of the Year, senior year of high school. He said that, you know, a lot of programs don't want lefties, but you make room when the lefty's this good. Arizona Player of the Year. In high school, his senior year, he's an All-American as well. Highly touted recruit and getting his first opportunity of the day as the fourth quarterback in for the Mountaineers. And his dad, Charlie, who we met through the recruiting process, was a, a catcher in the big leagues, yeah. Major League Baseball. Hands off to Anderson. Burst of speed down near the line to gain. These reps are so crucial for a true freshman to get in there. Again, that's the great thing about this red shirt rule for uh, for college football. You can get them some reps without burning their red shirt. And even talking to Graham Harrell this week, we asked him about about Nico and he said great things to say. He said he just keeps getting better and better every day of practice. He said a lot of times when players are getting better, you can tell he goes, but it's almost a daily thing where we can tell he's better today than he was yesterday. And he's probably better tomorrow than he was today as well. So he's just day by day progressing, getting better. And they really like how much they're getting out of the freshman. You know, Neil Brown has recruited well here. Mm -hmm. they, they, they recruited some talent. It's not easy to get guys to come to Morgantown, West Virginia. I mean, it's a lot. They, they went into Florida to get Donaldson and Mathis. 
got Nico out of Arizona done a really good job in re uh, recruiting in the transfer portal and out of high school and then even Juco guys you see so many of them. He put that on a good spot but Williams had it go right through his hands incomplete. Yeah fourth year at the helm for Neil Brown. You know Noah, this feels really similar when you look back at kind of the last few years of college football and we've been talking a lot about Mark Stoops at Kentucky year four of Mark Stoops at Kentucky they were in the same situation they started 0 and 2 they had lost to Southern Miss blown out by Florida and then they played an FCS school won the game and turned the corner after that toward the end zone got a man in stride touchdown Preston Fox the drive started with this 30 yard punt return and it ends with a touchdown of 26 yards. Nico Marchiol is all smiles right on the sideline and he should be. He put this thing right on the money between the two defenders. Oh that's close. Preston Fox gets his foot down. Hurry up and snap this ball before they challenge it. <laughs> that is really tight. Oh man. Is that big toe on the on the line? I don't know. I'm afraid to give my opinion on this yeah. one after going 0 and 2 of the last two. But I thought he was in. Yeah. Welcome to college football, Nico Marchiol. Not bad. Not bad at all. A couple completions on the drive, including the 26 yard touchdown, which appears to stand. And Grodhouse to attempt the point after. Sixty five to seven. West Virginia has been phenomenal on offense today really everywhere but when you score 65 points I don't really care who you're playing your offense had a good day. Yeah I mean this Graham Harrell offense put up 55 last week 38 the week before and now 65 and counting and counting as, as we have four minutes 42 seconds left in the game there may be some more. 65 to 7 less than five minutes to play here in West Virginia's first win of the season. So Towson's offense gets the football at the 39 yard line to start this drive. We missed the kickoff while we were in commercial break. First and 10 for Towson, all at 39. And now the third quarterback of the day for Towson, Nathan Kent, in to take his first snaps. And Let's go back to that last to touchdown Murray. for West Virginia, the first of the career for Nico Marchiol on a 26 yard touchdown pass to Preston Fox first off perfectly thrown ball too but then uh, hey Nico how do you feel about your first touchdown pass well, he could have thrown that any better <laughs> and he is juiced up that's a good feeling man your first touchdown of college football do you remember yours. I do. I do. Wait, who was it against? It was a uh, it was a 68 yard touchdown against Wisconsin. Oh no that wasn't my first my first one was against Purdue. Wow. I mean, there's so many I just got to like you know it's hard to remember them. all. <laughs> <laughs> well as long as you're humble about it that's the main thing. <laughs> On that drive Mark Yule with two completions the touchdown being the biggest one obviously. You are a three time All American, so I'll give you that. There, there probably are too many to remember. That's fine. First completion of the day for Nathan Kent. I just got to hope that none of my buddies saw me talk about my 68 yard touchdown. No, I'll, I'll never hear the end of that one. Uh, I certainly hope they do. 
Matthew Acucci had the catch on Ken's first completion. You know, we've talked so much about the offense today, rightfully so, putting up 65 points and <laughs> yeah. some 500 yards of offense. It's now 600 yards of offense, but, cool. but the defense has, has looked good, and, and they've gelled together a little bit, and the secondary played well, again, against an FCS opponent, but these are the kind of games, and Jordan Leslie talked about it with us, defense coordinator, getting some confidence and feeling good about yourselves and going into the Big 12 schedule the next week against Virginia Tech before you get there just with a little bit of swagger. Well, the offense was never the problem, right? They've been putting up points the last couple of weeks. It's been the defense who struggled at times. And today you see seven on the scoreboard, but the defense gave up zero. The kickoff return was the only touchdown for Towson. Exactly. Great point. And, and the defense last week against Kansas, there's just no other way to put it. They were bad. Yeah. They, they were bad and weren't prepared for the triple option that Kansas was running. But you know, I, I think in talking to Jordan Leslie, he said the most frustrating part was he didn't feel like they played hard. Right. You know, he didn't feel like they were running the football. And a lot of that comes from confusion and not sure, you know, not being sure where to line up. They weren't lining up right. But today it's been a good showing and their their best players made some plays today. Jordan Jefferson, we called his name a lot. The secondary played well. Dante Stills was causing havoc, even though he didn't show up on the stat sheet. Yeah, there's Jordan Leslie. Defensive coordinator also coaches the outside linebackers who played well today, too. Jordan Leslie, who came from Troy with Coach Brown, was the linebackers coach at Troy and then followed Coach Brown to West Virginia in one of his longtime confidants as an assistant coach. Yeah, and, and Neil Brown hasn't lost any confidence in, in him and his defense either. They, they feel pretty good. They say, hey, we still trust our group a lot. We don't feel any worse than what we did coming into the season. We know it's a good group. They just have to be able to show that for a full game. Shown it in spurts, haven't showed it for a full game until today. Yeah, I think when you look at it, you know, they gave up 38 points against Pitt. Now that was in overtime and. You know, they've played pretty well. That Kansas game was a little bit of what they think was a fluke due to that triple option. Kent with the completion. Lucas Londano with the catch. You knew coming into this game for West Virginia that they had to win and had to win big, but I, I don't know if you went into this game thinking necessarily that they would put up 65 and that they'd win by this big of a margin. Yeah, I really thought this would be a closer game. You know, Towson, with all the talent they've brought in in the transfer portal, they've completely re revamped their roster. 50, yeah. what did you say, 56, 56 new guys? Yeah. yeah. I thought it'd be a little closer, but, it, you know, again, it's tough when you have so many new guys to get them to play together. And I think West Virginia and everyone in this program knew as you said in the very beginning of this broadcast, it was a find out what you're made of type of game yeah. to steal your words. And they found out. And I think that they're going to have some confidence now going into the rest of their very difficult schedule. They need confidence. They need something because we touched on that schedule earlier in this quarter, but Virginia Tech on Thursday and then two ranked teams in a row after that with Texas and Baylor. Kent rolling out, firing, wide open receiver, tiptoeing the sideline. Malik Jackson, the tight end, but nobody around him. Malik Jackson was running wide open. The transfer from Maryland played in five games last year at Maryland. Another one of those power five transfers who played a lot of football somewhere else. Again, I think this Towson team is going to be good in the CAA this year. I mean, Rob Ambrose seems to always put in put up a good fight in the CAA. Yeah, spoiler alert. They're not playing West Virginia every week. And thrown just a little bit behind Sam Reynolds. You know, it's funny in the coaching world. If West Virginia gives him a touchdown right here, it'll completely change Neil Brown's mood going into that <laughs> post game. It's just how coaches are. Yeah, that's he true. Will, he will be furious when they get into the locker room if they give but give him a touchdown here. Well, the funniest part too is it's like the third stringers yeah. that are in defensively too. His starters haven't played since like the second quarter. He's going to go in the locker. I can't believe we gave up a touchdown on that last drive. <laughs> Bangda gets the touch here. Third down coming up. Chance for Towson's offense to get its first score today. They're not moving very fast with 30 seconds left in the game. 
I think they've seen West Virginia put up 65, and they're thinking, <laughs> if we give them any time, they might go and score <laughs> on us again. <laughs> Third down, Towson trying to threaten to score late. Kent, there's a flag. And Kent stutter steps right into a tackler. And on the keeper. All right, five seconds left. See if Towson gets one more look at the end zone. Illegal formation. Five men lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty. It's third down. All right, so third down and long. One more throw to the end zone. Can they do it? Building drama late. It's a good test for an end of game situation for West Virginia. One second on the clock right now. Timeout. Towson. And Towson calls the timeout to get one more play. I love it. For all the marbles. <laughs> I know people in the stands aren't happy about it, but this is like you're Towson, you're playing at a power five school, you're close to scoring your first offensive touchdown of the day. You get one more chance. Yeah, you gotta show some faith in your guys. Let them let them try to walk out of here with something positive. They're ready for the party to begin in Morgantown today. Does Morgantown party? I didn't know that. I they got to, right? <laughs> this, uh, these stands were, were pretty full today. We were kind of wondering after Kansas, the Kansas loss last week, would people show up? Would they be upset? It's a pretty good turnout. Now, a majority of them have left with the game already being decided. Can't on the final play. Wanting to go to the end zone, he's got nothing, and he has to take off and run. And that's the final play of the day. 65 to seven, Neil Brown's team with a dominant performance today from start to finish. The offense was great. Defense didn't allow a single score. And now Towson gets beat 65 to seven. Thank you so much to our entire crew today for their great work. Thanks so much for joining us on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. For Adam Brenneman, I'm Noah Reed. Once again, the final, West Virginia 65, Towson 7. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.